Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be starting with one point perspective of floating boxes in Photoshop. We're going to be creating an image where boxes will appear to float over a vanishing point. So that way, and I will show you down here, as I turn off the vanishing point here, you can see the vanishing point here, and they're all going to it right here. We got our horizon line right here. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to eventually be putting a gradient. Wait until the end to do that. We're going to start now with File New. And I will use 8x10, 300 resolution. Now, this is in portrait mode now. So if you choose landscape, it's just going to be wider at, wider at 10 inches. Here, 8 inches. And eight inches high. So I'm going to make it lands, uh, from landscape to portrait. It will be eight inches wide, 10 inches high, 300 resolution. I will put the name in right now. And last name, first name, and floating boxes. I'm just going to put in video as a reference. You do not have to put in video. We're not making a video out of this. So once I've got that done, last name, first name, floating boxes, click create. It will create our layer here, our cam background layer here. And I'm going to add a new layer first off. Double click on layer one here, right here. And I'm going to type in. Horizon line. And with this, I'm going to go to the paintbrush tool. And you see here, there's a lot of different ones. I've got this with the brush here. And I'm going to, I have options to change. We want to have the size of it, the type of brush. So I'm going to go up to the options bar up here. We'll make sure it's a hard round and 20 pixels. Now, if you are working, you can always go right click on the canvas. Same thing. It will give you that. Now, I'm going to start about halfway from the top and bottom, but I'm going to be using a black foreground color. And if you don't, you can always go double click here if it's not properly set. Choose your color and you see the new color here. I'm going to want black. Click OK. Or I can just go up to the color here and choose that or swatch it. All of which is adequate. Now, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click, click over here, hold down left mouse button. I'm going to left mouse button click. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to continue to hold down the left mouse button. And I'm dragging at the same time. So you see here, I've got a nice horizontal line. I will then go to the padlock here and lock it. That way, it's, you know, it's not being moved. That would be very bad. Next, I'm going to go to add a new layer. In this layer, I'm going to close out properties here so you can see these layers better. Close tab group. And this one here, I'm going to call. Vanishing point. And with that, I will choose another color. Since I have my color of swatches up here, I can go up here, choose red. I will right click here, choose about 50. Pixels wide. I'm not large enough to see. And then I'm going to click somewhere in the center here and create a red dot, as you can see right here. So that's going to be, that's the vashing point. And now I will go lock that. So that is covered. We're done with that. Next thing we're going to do is create a box. I'm going to go back to creating black here. We're going to work with black lines. I'm going to go over to uh, the full foreground and background colors. So you see it's now black again. 
It also changed it over here. I'll go up to my multi tool, create a square, a rectangle, any shape you want of that sort. Go to edit stroke. I'm going to work with 20 pixels. That's a nice size. Color of black. It's on the center, which means it's uh, the 20 pixel width and uh, is centered on the on this line here. If it's on the inside, it will be inside the line here. It will be placed at 20 pixel width line. And if it's on the outside, that line will be created there. You'll have uses for this in the future, but we can leave it at center. Click OK. And it told me something because the layer is locked. Click OK. And I forgot to do a basic thing, and we're going to be doing this a lot. We're going to be adding a new layer. So I'm going to just go select, deselect, create a new layer, and go once again, create my box here, and then go to edit stroke. Once again, nothing's changed. Click OK. So I've got that done. I will select, deselect, which is Control D. Go to my paintbrush. Right click, make it down to 20 here, so you can see it. Still a hard round. We want, we want to use a hard round. It's going to be much easier to work with. And then when I zoom in here, Control Plus, you can see I'm going from this corner here. I'm going to click, hold, move it, press Shift. And I am not holding the left mouse button at all while I'm moving. I'm just moving the, the paintbrush to its new position. Now I'm holding down Shift, and I'm going to click. Now I'm ready to attach the, the bashing point to this corner. I'm going to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move it again. I'll hold down shift and click. Now I want to do a whole new line and I just don't want to create a new line. So I'm going to let go of the shift button totally. I am not pressing the left mouse button. I'm going to scroll up a little bit using the shift tool to grab the hand. I'm going to click here first, not pressing the shift mouse button. The shift button key. I have now activated a new position for it to start. I will now go move it down here, press shift and click. Now, this is wonderful. We've got this done. I but I have to end this, otherwise, it's gonna be if this was in real life, this would be miles long. So, I'm gonna click here to start a new one. I will hold, hold down shift. I will continue to hold down shift. I will now drag while pressing the left mouse button straight down. And you see, there was something was not pressed correctly, so I'm going to click again, hold down shift, and now I'm doing it. I'm doing it, I'm dragging it down. I'm holding down the left mouse button and the shift at the entire time. Let go. I'm going to click again and holding down shift and the left mouse button while dragging it. I'm holding down the left mouse button the entire time. I'm going to create this one here. Now, to clear this up here, I'm going to use the rectangle marquee tool. It's great at right angles. While I'm using it, I can position it any time inside of it. I do not go to the move tool. That's going to that will actually move whatever is selected. So now I have that done. I will hit delete, and I'm going to go up here, remove this extra little bit here. Delete again. So I will do deselect, add a new layer. I do not want to be playing with these and having problems. I'm holding down shift, move this, and position it the canvas. I'm going to create a box up here. It's going to be a mirror image, basically. New layer, marquee tool, create one here. Go to edit stroke, 20 pixels, click OK. And now select, deselect. And back to my paintbrush. And I'm going to stick with just doing these shapes first, so that way I'm not changing colors because we're going to get into painting shortly. I'm going to click here to start the, the new uh, paintbrush mark. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to, when I move it into position, I'll hold down shift. I'll left click now. Now I'm ready to start the next section. I'm going to go up here, hold down shift, 
and left click again. Now I'm ready to start a new one. I'm letting go of shift and the left mouse button. I'm gonna click over here. Oh, move it into position on the vanishing point and left click again with this now. And you see here I have then this one. I'm gonna push it somewhere over here. Click here, hold down shift and drag straight down. Let go of the left mouse button. And then I'm gonna start dragging horizontally over to my right. You can see here we have now created another box. I will use the marquee tool. And sometimes this is where the problem comes in if you're working on the same layer. I would if I'm on the same layer, I would have to make sure not to chop this one off. I, that'd be bad. I'm gonna use the arrow key, left arrow key, just move it over a little bit. Press delete on the keyboard, then move it into position here, press the lead on the keyboard. Next box here will be really fast. I'm gonna put a new layer here. I'm gonna put one right here, well, directly above the bashing point. And there's a, there's a reason for this. You have three sides here. You're gonna see the next thing here. I'll just select, deselect. Next box, you're gonna see something a little different. Got my marquee here on the new layer. I will go to edit, stroke, 20 pixels, click OK, select, deselect, control D. Now I'm going to be trying to go select, um, connect the, the corners. Now if I try to do this corner, it's going to go straight through the boxes. If I'm doing a transparent box, that's fine, but I'm not at this moment. So I'm just going to click down on the bottom here. Because this box is solid, it's like a cardboard box or wooden box or even a building. Click here with the left mouse button. I'm going to move it down here. Press, hold down shift and click. And I'm going to go up here. Click, start a new one. Move it down here. Hold down shift and click. Now I want to end this box. So I'm going to click here, hold down shift and drag it. That one's done. I just have to remove the excess marquee tool. Go into position here. And I'm going to go select, deselect to remove it. Control D. Now these are done. I can put one over here now, and it will look just like this one, but it's going to be at a different angle. So new layer. Go to edit stroke, select, deselect, paintbrush, and once again, using the left mouse button, I'm clicking, I move it into position, I press shift, and then I click. So now I move this over to here, I press shift, and then I click. I'm going to end it by just Clicking to create a new line, indicate that I'm starting a new line. I will hold down, hold down shift. Since I'm doing a vertical line, I will continue to hold down shift the entire time. Now that this is done, marquee tool, press delete, control D, and I move on to my next box here. And they do not have to be the same size as you can see. Don't worry about it. Order enough stuff on Amazon, you'll see you'll get a lot of different boxes. So I've got the marquee, the rectangle marquee tool done. I will now just go to stroke, 20 pixels, click OK, select, deselect. And then once again, I'm going to use my paintbrush. Go from here. There's a reason why I'm choosing the corner. It's going to be just a little faster. Um, I'm going to click there. I'm going to, on the corner, I'm now holding down shift and clicking, clicking here. Then I'm going to go drag down here. Use the marquee tool once again. 
You guys see that we're using a lot of the same tools. On two point perspective, we'll be in, you know, including a few more tools, but that will come later. So we're going to select deselect, control D. Now, finally, we're going to add a new layer and we're going to start on the bottom row here. I'm going to put a final box up here just so you can see what happens when you have it. But I'm not going to do that right now. Marquee tool, new layer, and add a stroke. So control D, you can select, deselect. Go to our paintbrush, click over here. I move, I click, I'm going to press down shift and click. Press, now I move it here. And press, hold down and press, uh, shift and click once again. And then I'm going to start over here at the corner. Clicking with the left mouse button and I'm going to go up here. Hold down shift and click. Finally, I will draw my horizontal line here. Holding down the left mouse button while shift at the same time. And I'm dragging while holding down the left mouse button. I'm just not clicking. I'm holding it down. So, remove the diagonal lines using the marquee tool. Deselect, control D, once again, new layer. I'm still on the marquee tool, so I'm going to put my next shape in here. It's going to be very similar. To the one above. You may see it's going to be just about the same. Edit stroke, 20 pixels, black color still, nothing changed. Select, deselect, control D. Go back up here to the paintbrush. Click, hold down, uh, move it into position, press shift and click. I'm going to go move it into position, press shift and click. And then, I'm, so my diagonal lines are made. Now I'm going to go over here, press my left mouse button. I will hold down shift and I'm going to drag with the left mouse button. Nope, went too far. Control Z is our friend. Use it whenever you need to. Now that that's done, marquee tool. And finally, we'll put another layer up, select, deselect, and I'm on the marquee tool once again. I will create my last shape here. Second to last, actually, I left that one out. You'll see why in a second. Edit, scroll, click OK, select, deselect, control D, brush tool. So, and once again, I'm going to click on to start a new one. I'm going to click here. I will move it down to here, press shift and click. And then I'm going to go from my vertical line here, holding the right click here to start a new one. I will hold down shift and I'm going to continue to drag up, holding the left mouse button. I'm holding down the shift key at the same time. I'm left, and now I let go briefly for the Left mouse button, I'm going to drag over to my right. We've got that done. And I'm going to remove the diagonal lines on these edges here with the marquee tool. Press delete once again. Now, the coloring itself is the next thing we're going to be coming up to after the final shape. The final shape on a box, control D, and I'm just going to do this one. It doesn't seem like it's that impressive, but it, the concept is if we got the vashing, this over the vashing point, the lines here would be going to the vashing point here from each one here. You want to see that. So I'm going to do my edit stroke. Select, deselect, 
And then that's it. There's no, you can't see, you won't be able to see the line. So next, I'm going to be creating a light and I'm going to be choosing a very consistent light source. It's mainly, this is to learn how to use the paint bucket and also your color swatches. I like using this over the swatches. They're kind of a little, uh, they've become a little bit more difficult to use. I feel that you're going to be wandering a lot over here and it's much faster for you to understand color. So I'm going to be putting pure colors on the front faces of these here. And I'll be putting a dark color on the tops here, tops or bottoms here. On the sides, I'll be putting a tint, a light color. So starting with this here, I'm going to go down to my bottom one here, the first one. Paint bucket tool. Red right here. I'm going to go for the bottom here, and you see the new color. And I'm going to want to make sure it's dark enough. I want a difference. I don't want it to be in question. And now the new color is more of a tint of ink here. So they're easy to see a part. It helps create the difference in colors and shades help create a three dimensional look. I'm going to move over to my magentas here, my violets. And once again, I'm not on the right layer. If this happens, you know you're not on the right layer. You just painted the whole thing around it, around the red here. So I'm going to go up to the next one here. Go down to the dark side, down over here, and then up to light. So this is going to go pretty fast. Now the, this one here, if you have any question, just turn the eye, this is eye of visibility off. And once again, I've got my pure color. Then in blues, you need a dark color. If it is not dark enough, control Z, just go a little darker. So it's easy to see the difference in it. You want to make it easy. Your teacher's probably been, any viewer, any artist, anybody, they've been looking at a lot of artwork. You want to make it easy. So I've gone with blue for here. I'm on this layer here. Pure color. And then I'm going to go with a tint over here, like up here and here. So I'm going to move it on over. That one's kind of close. I'm going to push it over even farther. I use Control Z to undo. That one's got some difference now. For any pure color here, for the center one here, I will get to that a little bit later. You'll see I have this one here I'm going to be working with. I'm going to go over to my green, pure green. And then my light green. So you can see the differences. Next, I'm going to over to this one. Bottom left hand corner. Go with yellow. And yellow, because there's not a lot of difference in it, will be interesting. You're going to have to push the boundaries a little bit. You guys see, as you get darker, the differences. Now, the light one will be the interesting one here. You want to make sure there is a definite change in it. Going up again, we're going to go for this one right here. I'm going to go into the oranges here. Then I'm going to choose my darker color. And finally, we're going to go over to this one in the corner here. Now this one, what we got here, is a very nice one. We're going to, we're going to choose, once again, somewhere in the red, red oranges you can do. And I'm going to go pure up here, all the way up in the corner here. I will choose dark down here and light up here. We've got that, and the last, last but not least, the one over the vanishing point. Just going to go with another green. I'm feeling 
as I move this down, you'll see the different types of greens you're going to get. That's your pure color. That's it. Now, for the background, we're going to start with, you can start with going with a new layer above the horizon line. You're not going to need to see it anymore. Don't delete the horizon line. Don't draw on it. Just leave it. And I'm going to go over, underneath the paint bucket, There, you right-click, there is a gradient tool. Now, there are lots of gradients here. And I'm going to double-click on that shape, and I'll do it again. Double-click here because I'd like to see the whole thing, and it's much easier. You have basic gradients, blues, and they divided it up nicely. Really gave a lot more. Now you can choose any grade you want, or you and kind of feeling in the pink mood today. So I'm going to start with this one here. And now, if I want to add another color in here, I click, and it's the last color I used. If I and I'm going to click again, and I'm going to double click on the little rectangle with that little square with a triangle on top, like a little house. Change the color. Click OK. Click here, we'll duplicate what I just put in here. Double click on it. Click OK. Now, if you want to repeat any one of them, just click on it and then click again. And you can continue to do this here. Now, if there is one that you don't want, just go on it and drag straight down. It will delete it from it. Click OK. If you love it, you love this one. You made it. Before you click OK, you might say, I love this one. You click New, and it's been put in with the pink there. You can see it right there. I'm going to click OK. There's different types of gradients. Up here, there is the linear one. Straight across, Control Z, get rid of that one. There is the circular one, which we will be using. There is the diamond one, which you can also use. And I'm going to go slightly over the bashing point here so you can see it. Or you could use the mirror, and I'm just going to go like this, and a little small so you can see both sides of it, how it's a reflection. And then finally, the diamonds are squares. Now, I would use either one of these. The circular. Or the diamond one here. Then we can go up to, to give it a little bit of interest here. I'm going to go up to filter, distort, twirl. And you can see what it's going to do right now. But I can, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. It's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to, you can change the angle on it, clockwise to counterclockwise. And depending upon how much you, an angle you put on it, will determine how much of a curl it will get. I'll click OK. Now, this is basically done. The last thing to do, go to the very top, add a new layer, go to your type tool, in the bottom right hand corner using control point X, and type. Your, your first and last name. And that way, as well, making sure it's visible. If you make it so that you cannot see it, it doesn't count. And zooming in a little bit, you can see it. So this is the whole project right here. Nine boxes, nine boxes, one point perspective. And leaving your horizon line in the action. Available. Cool. The next thing to do is just hand it in. Have a great day.